Hey guys, Adam aka CS Radical here, and this is Super Mega Baseball. Yeah, it sure is a baseball game. Uh, this is just released on Tuesday. I believe this would have been the 16th of December on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, only on PlayStation Network. It's not a disc version as far as I've seen. Um, it's made by Metalhead Studios, who I don't think I've ever... I, I've never heard of them making something. They probably have, I just have no idea what. But, um... This game is essentially as far away from your traditional realistic baseball game as it can get. It kind of reminds me of like the old arcade Super Nintendo baseball games or like uh, the backyard baseball games that used to be on PC for a while that Humongous Entertainment used to make. Essentially though, like there's nothing, there's, there's no connection to Major League Baseball. There's no, you know, there's no like advertisements plastered for anything. It's all done in their own like little world. And it definitely has its its own little flair to it, as you can kind of see with the artwork here. It's it's very unique in the way that it draws everything. It does remind me kind of like uh, the MLB Power Pros and uh, Bobblehead Pros that they do. So, as you can see with the team names here, they're all their own unique little stuff. Like, my team right now is the Moose. They're all Power Headers. Every team has its own special um, thing about it. Like, some team is really good at pitching. Some team is really fast. Some team can hit really good, you know? And then in the case, like, you can customize you know, their appearance if you want to, because, like, there are some of them, like, head-wise that look really dumb, so I kind of mess around with them, but, like, you can take care of every single person on the team, change their gender, change their name, change their positioning. Well, I'm next, no, you can't change their positioning, sorry. They give you the, um, they give you the ideas, the, they give you the set, sorry, they give you the set positions that you're supposed to go with, so. But otherwise, in terms of, you can pretty much change anything else, all the look, all the names, all the num jersey numbers and stuff, so. The one thing that I have a problem with this game is it's a $20 game, but it's $20 that only gives you two modes and they're both single player. There's just exhibition and season, and I can kind of get away with it just a little bit. I can kind of give them a bit of a free pass just because I really like the game. I really do think this is a fun game to play. I think this is the kind of game that you should wait till it drops like five bucks or if it's on a holiday sale or something like that. But as of right now, I, I just don't get it. There's leaderboards, but there's no online play. I'm wondering if it's just because they had a... I get, uh, this is kind of a proof of concept in a sense for them. So I wonder if maybe that's just it, is that they were just trying to um, get, a, get a feel for what's coming with this game. And then after that, maybe they'll patch in online or maybe in the next game that they come out with, they'll do it. But either way, it's still a very fun game. And I'm going to show you a quick three inning exhibition match just so you get the idea. So, they start off with the Asirius level, or uh, the Eagle level, I should say. And I have it at Sirius. It starts you at 15 for casual. I would say, unless you're really bad at these kind of games, start at 30, because they handhold you way too much. Obviously, it goes all the way up to 99, and I assume by going up to that level that it will just stop handholding completely. Because in, in the lower levels, they will do most of the work for you. Like, they'll run the fielders for you completely. Unless you, like, you can move, but they'll do it for you, and they'll take you towards the ball. Same goes with the pitching and the hitting. I imagine on 99, you're on your fucking own, and I can't imagine doing just the batting on my own, because the batting can be a little bit difficult, but... Anyways, let's just get a quick three-inning game in here. So again, you can always set your lineup. I'm gonna switch the pitcher here, because I like the name of the next one, the Rhiannon Cannon. Other than that, everybody else I've had already set up, and they're usually your best guys. Like, there's one guy, Nixon, who's just a really good power hitter, but the rest of them are like, eh. One of them's really fast if you ever decide to, you know, uh, pinch runner, but for the most part, you, you're pretty much fine with leaving it the way that it is. So, let's get on with the game here. There's a few things that I find that are missing from it. Um, there's no infield fly rule. So, I guess, but then again, since it's not realistic baseball, you never know if they're just like, screw it, don't have it. Or maybe they just couldn't get it in there, but either way, um... In terms of the art style, I really do like the look of it. It's It's got its own little charm to it. So anyway, let's start off. So, as you can see the meters, they tell you everything you need to know. Mojo is essentially like composure with most, um, realistic games. It's just the idea of how easy it is for you to possibly make a mistake on your pitch. And then obviously there's the other categories. Now with pitches, you have all, everything available. It's not like you have only three pitches or four pitches or five pitches. You have everything. So from a couple of fastballs, to a screwball, to a changeup, to a forkball or a sinker, depending on how you look at it, curve, slider, and yeah, you're, you're two different kind of fastballs. So when you pitch, you can throw wherever you want. 
you hit A, or in this case, sorry, I'm, I'm still kind of used to Xbox, but you hit X, it will do most of it for you. You want to try to get into the center. For the most part, I just do whatever I feel like doing. I set it up and then move it kind of where I want to. Like, it says I missed, but for the most part, I don't care that much. Uh, the triggers is a dive, and the uh, R1, L2s are for jumping just straight up in the air. Kind of reminds me of the Super Nintendo again. With the Super Batter Up, they kind of did the same thing. There's also no runner pit. You can't pick off the runner, which is also kind of disappointing. Now, as you can see, I let go, and they're doing all the work. When I Obviously, when you see the circle pop up, I have full control again. And when you're throwing to the base, it's like, oh, what a stupid AI decision. I've actually never run into that. Normally, they're not that dumb. But, uh, yeah, and when you're throwing to the bases, whatever button is uh, the one that you throw to. So, in the case if you're wanting to throw to first base, you throw with the circle. Let's see, did I need, yeah, I did need the jump there and I missed. So, I hit the circle button, hold it down to try to get as max as you can. That gets the thrower there as fast as possible. And that got me to first base while I was in the outfield. Can't do much with that. And they're hitting when I don't want them to. For the most part, I find with the AI, you can you can pretty much throw anything at them, and they'll swing at it for the most part. Although they're unless it's like way off the plate, then it won't matter. Uh, with hitting, there's three ways of doing it. You can bump with the circle. You can normal swing with the X which obviously didn't do very well there. And if you hold the power button, which is the square, I'll show you here, it will charge up. And if you release it at the right time, you can see the numbers there. If you release it at, at high, as, high up to 99 as possible, then you get the most power out of it. And it'll show there, like I got it at 81. And in this case, I still hit it really high on the plate. So the one thing that, that's kind of tricky is there's no option as far as I've looked, at least last time I checked that you can't keep the uh, the batter box circle in there when they throw the pitch so you don't have that reference point which again kind of makes sense anyway you don't want to have you know the easy way in but it would be nice to have the option for those who you know were having trouble with it I get some oh god that was a bad first inning with running it's very similar you use the left stick to select which runner you want. So if you want the guy who's on first, you hit the left stick to the right to get that guy. And then you use the same buttons, the triangle, circle, square, and X to direct to which base you want him to go to. You can also hold down the, um, I am not easy money. Are you kidding me? I wish I was easy money. But, uh, you can use the triggers to send them, to send everybody around, but for the most part, you'd want to do it individually just because you might throw somebody a little too far out when he also could be a slow runner and then you just get caught. So I usually just do every base runner individually because I have a pretty good idea of who's going to be able to make it to another base and who's not. So you can see, like, sometimes they won't swing, but for the most part, they'll swing at almost anything you throw unless it's pretty blatantly off the plate. So, like, if I throw this, it's a little low. They'll still go for it for the most part. I assume the higher the level, you know, it's even more unlikely that they won't. But, you know, for the most part, they will swing at most things. And it, I don't feel like, unlike the problems that I used to have with MLB 2K games when it came to pitching in the My Player mode, I don't feel like there's any point in the game where it, it suddenly just says, okay, you know, you're up by a lot of runs. We're going to start having them hit every time you pitch. Whereas in this game, for the most part, if they get a hit, it's usually pretty legit, and it's usually your fault. Whereas, I had such a problem where, like, yeah. I'd be pitching seven scoreless innings in MLB 2K, like, say, the last game being 14, I believe, or 13, I can't remember. Um, but I would pitch seven scoreless innings, and then all of a sudden, every pitch they would hit. And there's just nothing yeah. I could do, and then we'd lose. But in this game, I feel like, for the most part, they do give you the leeway you want and it's really up to you and this time i finally got a decent piece of it but it was still out of the zone like i just hit the triangle there and you can see in the corner the bottom right corner that it sent him to soar towards second base so and for the most part it's a pretty rewarding system i pretty much use power the entire time it also helps that my team are meant to be power hitters so i just use it like that anyway I mean, with contact, I find, you know, you might get a couple of, of decent signals, but I, I'd rather just, you know, be swinging for the fences every pitch. 
And it usually works for the most part. Like this game, although sometimes it takes me a few innings to get warmed up. Usually I can have innings where I can really get it rolling and I'll hit like maybe a couple of home runs again, maybe four runs in the inning. Now in terms of defensive AI, like I was noticing there for a second there, the first baseman wasn't about to go over. He was going to go charge the ball. For the most part, the defensive AI is, is pretty smart. They don't go for a ball that they know is not theirs. I think there's been one case where just that happened where everybody went for it and there was nobody on the base that I needed. But that's a that's a very much of an anomaly. I've played probably 15 games so far, not counting all these short ones I've been testing out with. So, for the most part, like unlike a lot of sports games where the AI can really become an issue, I've actually found it to be relatively fair and relatively calm. Like, I'm not sitting back thinking, you idiot, why did you do that? It's pretty much been, okay, yeah, it's doing exactly what I would want it to do. Now, for those wondering, you're seeing both the pitcher and the batter are kind of sweating a little bit. That's just the idea that the pressure's up on them. You can see that on the bar as well, that that's what they're taking it as. The pressure's high because it's the bottom of the third. So if I hit a home run right now, game's over. Right now, I'm not doing as, as what I should be doing, which is somewhat frustrating because I thought I was actually good for this game. <laughs> That's a bad hit, too. And for the most part, because, like, my team's power hitters, most of them are not very fast. So there's also that. Come on, Rhiannon Cannon. Oh, there's a fair there's a fair ball, at least. So I finally got a hit on the board, I think. Because I don't think I did a hit yet in this game, have I? No, she's the ninth batter, so I wouldn't have. Not Joe Crisp. Come on, man. Help me out here. Ooh. I'm used to them always throwing me balls, so... Sometimes I, I just, oh, I should have had that. So we're going to go to extras. But I find what they like to do, especially once you start getting in the higher up levels, they'll throw you slower pitches to mess you up, and then they'll throw them out of the zone for the first couple of pitches to try to make you swing early. In this game, they're throwing me strikes, which I'm not expecting. So <laughs> that's a disadvantage. I'm actually okay with, like, I wish there was an option that you could set what holds your hand. So that way I could, um, I feel like I would be fine if I did the fielding myself. And same with the pitching, I think I'd be fine. It's the batting that I think I would still want the, uh, the little bit of extra help on because I'm not sure I could direct the circle to follow every pitch because sometimes if they're really fast, you can't, I can't quite keep up with it sometimes myself and that's just even normally. So I'm not sure how that would go. But I think with fielding and, uh, and uh, pitching, I, I could do it pretty well. I mean, with fielding, especially for, like, high pop-ups, like, I can follow the shadow pretty nicely, and I have a pretty good idea on where it's going to go. Ooh, this might go. Oh, I got it. Going to make it. Yep. Sometimes diving. Sometimes I overdo the dive, so it just hits me in the foot, and I end up just messing it up. Yeah, what I usually do. Come on. Oh, I almost got hit there. I haven't tried to intentionally hit someone yet, but they have hit me, so I know that exists. I think the last thing that I haven't com oh, damn it. I it was the, ball. the other thing I haven't commented on is you can see in the top left, there's the score in the background. That's what the leaderboards are based off of. And the higher the ego, the higher the multiplot. Yeah, I was about to say multiplayer, but the multiplier gets higher when you uh, raise the level. And it seems like I might be making this game longer than what I wanted to. I was hoping for this to be a quick three-inning game, because usually I can hit pretty well, but right now I'm, I think I'm succumbing to the pressure of doing this recording. But yeah, like, by the end of the game, it'll also put a couple of bonuses to save you get a shutout, you don't allow that many hits. Aw, oh, man. I hope this game isn't too boring to you guys, man. Like, so far, I've been playing season. I've done, I think, eight games out of... You can have it from three different lengths. I did the long 48 because I'll probably be playing this for a while. And so far, after playing eight games in that and in all the exhibitions I've kind of messed around with, I really do enjoy this game. I think it's a nice thing to sit down, play, like, maybe up to an hour with, and then put it down and do something else. And I haven't tried this multiplayer yet, but I can't wait to do so because or at least a uh, local multiplayer, because it seems like a very fun game to do. Especially if, if you have somebody who you know who is also a baseball fan as well, because, I mean, even then, if it wasn't, you know, if somebody wasn't a big fan of baseball, I think this would still be 
the kind of thing to, to get them into because it's not, you know, too realistic. It's just, you know, trying to just be fun. Whereas a lot of sports games I find are trying so hard to just look as good as possible and be as close to the real thing. Where I don't know if that's always the right idea. I think with games now like NHL and FIFA and then they're trying too hard to be this crazy, you know, shiny example of realism where it kind of starts taking the fun away from it when you start making it so serious. Oh, yeah, I thought I got a little bit on that, but I did. Is that good enough to go over? No, it's not. Damn. I cannot hit to save the life of me right now. Oh, nope, that's going to go foul. Sometimes it'll curve back. That time it did not. Oh, man. I intended this to be three innings, and I can't get anything going. Yeah, like that pitch I threw relatively low, and it didn't do much of anything, so. A lot of the times, like, with the higher... Ooh, wow, that was a crazy bounce. A lot of the times with higher levels, they won't they won't let strikes go by. There are some cases where in the early levels, we'll, you'll, they'll, you'll just throw a regular pitch, they won't touch it. But in this case, like, I even notice now at, at 40 Ego, they'll pretty much go after anything. That almost got me in trouble because the AI wanted to go get that. But for the most part, with strikes, if it's in the zone, they're going to swing for it. So the only way you're ever going to get the strike out is if they foul off a couple of pitches and then you go for the uh, one outside the zone that they can't get. Which I suppose is somewhat realistic in a sense, but there are guys that will watch like strikes almost down the middle and they'll let it go. Like in that case, that was probably in the zone they'll miss, but I've, it's not very often that I freeze them for a strikeout. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, that's gone. Well, looks like I might be losing this game. Because apparently I can't hit the broad side of a barn in this one. But in terms of everything, I really do enjoy the style of it. It's it's a ah oh, damn, how did I miss that one too? Didn't think I'd have to die. The art style I I like a lot. It's very quirky. The music obviously with being like really heavy metalish and it's being like absurdly you know, like hardcore, it's just like, yeah, that's what I want. But I mean like it's it's got such charm that I can see like a lot of people getting into this just on the value of it being such a silly game. I, but like I said, I think the $20 price tag kind of makes it a tough buy right now. This is the kind of game that I definitely wait for. If I'd known exactly what this game was, I probably would have waited and hoped maybe it was up on sale. But even then, I don't regret getting the game. It's a fun game. Ugh. Can't hit a fair ball. I've had games where I've hit like 21 runs and I can't do it. Man. I'm telling you, the recording's putting the pressure on me. Oh, there's a hit. Can I make a two? 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 I don't know if I'm going to... Oh, God. Oh, they missed. Oh, they missed. I think they were trying to go... I don't know what they were trying to do there. That was weird. Come on, Nacho. Nacho Chris. Nope. Oh, I got one more shot. Who is it now? The Irene Fast. Man. Oh, that sucks. Well, that's it for that. So it took uh, double the time I thought it would. But that is Super Mega Baseball. And that's about a 20 minute... Yeah, we're about almost 20 minutes in the recording. But like I said, like that was bad. I got two hits in that game. It's, it's definitely a very fun game to play if, if not for something just to kind of sit down and just enjoy for a couple of short games and then you know you do your thing and do something else so other than that I can, I can briefly show you what the season mode looks like you can also adjust the uh, difficulty at any time so you can change it to say you're say you're just mastering that level too much you can pop it up a couple of points see how much harder it gets so here they kind of operate in the, you just keep playing, they'll simulate the games and you'll go. Every time you level up, like I'm at level, excuse me, I'm at level 10 right now, you'll unlock new contracts where you can sign people that you can apply these bonuses on top. 
of uh, of your players. Now, in the sense here, like, say this guy who's a trainer, and you can see in the bottom left corner, he only works on the T spaces. And as your team levels up, they'll unlock more spots to put these things. So eventually, you'll have spots for everything for on each player. But right now, like, say if I go up, there's usually one that... Okay, not anymore, but there used to be one that I had that only applied to just a couple of my pitchers, and that was it. Whereas now, like, for the most part, I can assign, like, say, this guy who is a coach onto almost anybody, because they all have a C space. I think, actually, that is everybody. I don't think... No, I think it's one, I think one, like, relief pitcher and a couple of guys on the lineup. They're not getting it, but a couple more levels up and you would get it. And you can also hire more. And like it says there, I have three times contracts right underneath the uh, style there. And I can sign any of these guys. The quality really doesn't mean too much. It just depends on what you want. The one that you want to look for is the CL, which is the length of contract. So that's how long these guys will go for. And again, it will show you, like, there's an example right there where it only goes for those specific two guys. Because that's a special one. It's a stylist. So, of course, Nacho Crisp, and he's got the blonde afro going on. But yeah, I mean, otherwise, like, you can search for specific things. So you say you want a guy for the G spots. Wow, that was a silly thing to say. Or the uh, the T's or the C's or the S's. Like, you have all the specific things. Now, obviously, I have all the coaches hired, so that doesn't exist. And then, just in case you're always curious, you can see all the actual modifiers that do exist. And some of these, like, they'll get better and better as you level up. So you can see as, like, with the yoga classes, I'm one level away from those things. Instead of being a plus three, they'd be a plus seven from then on. So you can always make your guys better. And it, it's definitely a, it's a decent system. I mean, at base level, your guys are already pretty good. It's just now you can just make them really good and, and help out when you get to the harder levels. So other than that, like I said, with the customizing your appearance and stuff, so we'll end the video there. So like I said, it's it's definitely expensive for what the game is. I think it could have been priced down $5. That would have been a really fair price. So unless you're a really hardcore baseball fan, you want something a little bit different to play with, I'd say hang on a little bit to either maybe it drops down or maybe it's just put on sale. But other than that, I actually do enjoy this game. And I think if you do have somewhat of an interest in baseball, you should look into it. And I kind of wish that this would be something they put on Steam as well, because I think that would be a nice thing to do. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe to the channel if you're at your own leisure. You can follow me at uh, CS Radical on Twitter, and also you can check out the podcast, which is now at its new home at csradical.libsyn. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Thanks for listening and watching, guys, and take her easy.